Uh, I was called to diagnose this vehicle and it's very strange. You see, fault code around 36. <laughs> 36 fourth code. So what I'll do is um, this car was brought to me to diagnose but what I have to do is I have to go to report and check the actual fourth code. And you can see most of them are active and it looks like it's a circuit problem because most of the fourth code I'm seeing is open circuit, open circuit, open circuit in all of them and that means there is a circuit problem. And you can see I'm having another circuit problem with the race gate actuator and everything, and even with the EVA. So I'll check the wiring diagram and see if I, I could be able to find the actual circuit problem related to this vehicle. But remember your basics. Whenever you find issues related to this circuit issues, it could be that it's a wiring, it's a fuse issue. So you go back to your basics and check all the fuses. So for now, what I'll do is, I'll check all the fuses first and now get back to the vehicle and scan it again and see the ones that will go. But for now, let me try and erase the fourth code. Let me just turn on the vehicle, turn it off and turn the ignition on and erase all the fourth code to see the actual fourth code that will remain. So it's remaining with three with the control unit. So now what I'll do is I'll recycle the ignition and scan it again. Okay. So go to auto scan and rescan the vehicle again. So now instead of rescanning, why don't I start the vehicle rather? Because that'll rather let me get more faults in the system. So I'll start the vehicle and go for my test light and start testing the fuses but before that i have to go to my wiring diagram and check which of the fuse uh, which of the wiring links to all of those things so now let me check it again and i'm still having open circuit open circuit circuit to ground circuit to ground open circuit so let me go to the ecu or ecm then let me check the faults that I'll be getting in it. So troubleshoot, sorry, trouble code. Then after going into the trouble code, you can see the cylinder one camera adjuster, open circuit B and A, both of them, and they have camera adjusters on it. So, so that means all those fault codes are back. Wow, so let me check my fuses and you can see the EVAP and the table guest. So I'll do I'll check all my I'll check the wiring diagram and get to the solution or the button of the book. I'll check my wiring diagram and my fuses. Then I'll know what to do. So, so this is the location of the fuses. So what I'll do is I'll test all the fuses and see which one of them is off. So we'll do my fuse testing and see which one of them is off. So after checking all the fuses in the vehicle, I didn't find any fuse that is bad. So now what I'll do is I'll check it from the control unit that is complaining that the fuses are out. I'll check it from that side rather. Then I'll know what to do. So these are the cellulars that I'll be taking out to check. The camp cellulars that I'll be checking. So I'll check them and see if I could get power on top on on them. So now what I'll do is um, I'll take out this pins. These are the cam actuators, so I'll take one out and measure the voltage. So now I've taken one pin out and let me measure the voltage on it. So let me search for which one is my power and which one is ground. So this one, you can see I'm having, let me change the pin to the second one. And you can see this is a BIOS voltage. This is a BIOS voltage from the oil, uh, from the sensor itself. This is a BIOS. This is a BIOS voltage 
from the sensor itself. So what I'll do is the moment I touch it with ground, it goes off. So that means that's the BIOS voltage. And this is the, this is the, the second pin. All these are sunlight. So this is the second pin, which is zero. So now what I'll do is let me find for power. So now what I'll do is I'll find for power and check the system and see the fourth code that I'll be getting. So now because it's a circuit problem, to play safe, what I'll do is um, I'll turn my multimeter on and give it a ground on the body of the alternator. Then I'll test and find uh, the set uh, pin 2 is the one that carries the power. So this will be pin 2. So this will be pin 2. Then I will... So now I've plugged in pin 2. And I'm measuring this voltage. So, so this is pin 2 that I've, I've changed it. So this is pin 2 and this is the voltage that I'm reading. So now what I'll do is... Now you can see... I'll put on my test light and my test light has turned on and it's measuring 6 volts. It has turned on because the current that the test light is drawing is less than the... And they are sunny LED, so I can't, I can't start them with the test light on because the moment I do that, that means my test light will turn on and the sunny LED will not turn on. So what I'll do is, for this, what I can do is I'll use it to erase all the fault code and see if every fault code will go off. So now I'm going to erase all the fault code in the vehicle. Oh. And you can see the fault code in the vehicle. So more of, so what I'll do is, now that I have connected the test light to it, now that I've connected the test light to it, what I'll do now is, um, now you can see most of the fault code are passive which means it's shortened power somewhere. So I'll erase all the fault code. Then I'll search for the power. So erasing the fault code. Then let me scan it again and erase the fault code again. Okay, so let me cycle the ignition and turn it back on. Then read the first code and see the ones that will appear. Then you can see all of them came passive. So erase all the fourth code. And there is no fourth code. I've checked the fuses here and everything is okay. So I'll go and check the fuses in the engine bay also. And you can see when I read the fourth code, there is nothing coming. Recycle the ignition. So recycle the ignition. The ignition is on now. Then let me rescan it. And there is no fault code. And <laughs> let me check now if my test light is on. Now my test light is off. So that means there is no current being drawn in the system now. So now what I'll do is I'll find for the shot where the where where the fault is. Because now my uh, my multimeter is also reading voltage, right? So you can see now some of the sun LED has just turned on. That's why the current has drawn. So you can see the current. So the test light, they are trying to draw current through my test light. But my test light is having more uh, lower current. So my test light would rather turn on than to turn on the sun LED. So I will do everything to find where the power shot is. So that I will be able to fix it. So now, after running all the tests, I know it's a fuse issue. I know it's a fuse issue, so what I'll do is I'll test the fuses here and see which one is it. So I'll test the fuses here and see which one is causing the problem because I test the fuse inside the vehicle and I couldn't find any issue with it. So I'll test the ones here and see which one is causing the problem. And it looks like this fuse is not turning on. So let me go to the next one and check the other fuses. So
So now the main problem is why did it blow? So that's what I have to search for. But for now, I'll try and fix a fuse in it and see if it will go off again. Okay. So you can see this fuse is blown and it is right here. Right here. So I'll, I'll replace the fuse first. I don't know what to do. What I've done is I've rewired the fuses, so I'm just trying it to see if it will work. So now the vehicle is running, and you can see it is running. So let me read the fourth code and see the fourth code that will come up. And all of them are passive fourth code, so just erase them and they are gone. So I'll go for try and come back and check the actual problem with the vehicle again so read the fourth code again and there is no fourth code thank you for watching subscribe to my channel for more videos so now after the long try we have only one fault in the engine and i have to check it and see which actual issue is it if it's something related to what i did so it's a passive issue, so I'll just erase it. Uh, oil pressure regulator. Most of the time, v, uh, VW or Audi has issue with their oil pressure regulator. So I'll check that one. It's a passive issue, which means it is a stored fault. So I'll just leave that one. Then that means I'm done with all my diagnosis. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more videos.